Okay, unit five, um, assessment one preview uh, using the review. Uh, pre is before, re is going to the past. View obviously means to look at something. Here it comes. It turns out I like vocabulary. Um, uh, there is a study, the more words you know, the higher your pay will be. So if you just start learning vocabulary, let's say you don't know what your job is going to be. Just get a vocabulary program, they have them online, you can buy them, whatever. You will make more than the person who doesn't. Uh, the famous program, the one that I have, is called Verbal Advantage. Don't let the price mess with you, just save up to it. It's like around 200 bucks. When I bought it, it's probably less by an ounce on sale, by for 100 But it's one of the best. Um, Verbal Advantage by William Harrington Elster. And in case, reverse. is what you should think when you hear inverse. So I'm going to reverse these two numbers. See, they ask for the inverse of the relation below. I'm going to reverse the 0 and the 6, and I will have done what they're asking to do. I'll have you do it on these two. This is the easy part of this new unit. So please write the inverse of this relation, then you do it over there. I'll do, do it once. They do have to be in um, parentheses because they're an ordered pair. First is the, oh, above it, put an X and a Y. Uh, when you reverse it, the 6 is no longer a Y. Because he's in a parentheses, he really did become um, the X, and the 0 really switched over and became the Y. Put these braces, the pointy guys are braces, um, and then go ahead and do uh, A through B. If they did it right, hopefully did B as well. Uh, someone tell me what the uh, number should be in the second parenthesis. The third parenthesis, anyone else? Yeah, one day you'll need me, though. <laughs> I don't forget that. Uh, nope, no time. I had a dream about this person who I'm trying to get in contact with them, and somehow I can't get in contact, and I know they know. I'm trying to get in contact, I only knew you in seventh grade, which makes you 12 and we're 45, so. One day, one day. I'll wait. All right, here comes um up here. Uh, finish it down there. Uh, pause. Uh, no, this shouldn't be a question. Inverse, reverse. We're going to inverse, reverse up here. This is part of the real deal. This is baby in the middle. This is going to be part of the real deal, but it begins baby. To do the inverse, you're going to reverse the where the letters are found. In other words, Y started here, X started up here. But now I'm going to take my x and I'm going to put it where the y is. I'm going to take my y, put it where the x is. Find the inverse. No big deal. Inverse, reverse. Here we go. You try and do these two while I do this first one. What do you mean do the first one? I'm going to start by putting an x. The three is not a number, so you stay wherever you are. Inverse, reverse. Please do that to these other two, but they're not done. Go down to the bottom. And I'm going to start saying some more easy stuff, and then we'll see how much hard stuff we can do. And so step one, um, I wish I had color so that way I could, um, will you do it? Where I, I can change it. Oh, bad idea. Now what? All right, I have a 5y squared minus a 6. The numbers don't change, it's the letters. Uh, x. Uh, minus 5, um, y, minus 3, k. So they got some easy stuff. Let's see if we can keep this thing moving down to the bottom. All right. Where do we go? I need to say something to you about negative exponents. I need to say something to you about exponents that have a zero. Okay. I'm going to go to the restroom, you can finish the text. Now here, in the word of log, that word log stands for logarithm, logarithm. Uh, I need to look into it further to say to the young people, oh, logarithm means this, and who came up with it, but I got nothing. Uh, it's a word that was made up, but here's the first thing I want to say to you. Notice this problem has an equal sign in it and something on the other side. Notice log here doesn't have um, an equal sign on the other side. If it doesn't, I want you to put this, an equal sign, And normally you put a question mark in the world of math when we don't know something. It's unknown. We use a variable. The famous one is an x. There's a reason for that. It went from one language to another, Arabic to 
English and the letter in Arabic. Um, the closest it was Chai, or it may have been Greek. Chai, Chai is an accent, so it came over. But in, the letter actually was the beginning of the word unknown or something. So X is special. Um, so he's a bad one. We'll still do it all. I'll fix it. It's broken. He said, like, no, I don't want to go out and do it. I don't want to do it right in here. But why wouldn't you go out? Teacher said, you can do it. Not don't do it. You can. Just not here. All right. Um, take a look and see what you got here. Take a look and see what you got. I'll let him finish that one. If he has to do another one, I'll have to take it. Um, all right. Um, all right. Next step. When you're talking about logs, logarithms, here's what your brain should think. Even if you don't know how to do it, your brain should think this. Logarithms have something to do with powers. 2 to the 7th power, x to the 3rd power, 10 to the 5th power. When you hear logs, logarithm, you should think, I don't know how to do it, but I know it has something to do with the power, like, like raise them to a power. So let's look at some old powers to remind you about zero powers and negative powers. Now, let me write the problem down. I'm going to do how many fours? Do five fours. One, two, three, four, five. Write what I write. Um, one, now let me do three. Um, one, two, two, so, two, three, four, I'll turn that down. One more, two, two. You're writing what I'm writing. If you're just watching, bad idea. Um, write what I write. Uh, let's erase. Well, let's see what happens. We'll see what we need to use when we don't. I'm going to show you why anything raised to zero power is one, and why anything raised to a um, negative power is not a negative number, but it's a fraction. That's my goal. You'll see the pattern. I've never done this before. I wish a teacher would have done it for me. All right, here we go. All right, hey, Thomas, let's do some junk we know. I need you to be. Let's get one more up there. All right, you should have six. All right, let's see if we can put up some numbers here. Let's make you negative 2, negative 1, 0, um, 1, 2. These are powers on these numbers. Um, can I do it with the 4s? 4s, I'm just going to use the third one down from the bottom is a 0 and a 1, uh, 1 and a 0. One and a zero, and I'll even put your negative one here. All right, let's see if we can do the pattern so that some people can feel the rhythm. Here we go. All right, let's start with the twos. Twos are the easiest. They're the ones we can use. Do you have any space in the right over here? Yes. No. Dang it. All right. Do you know what two to the uh, third power equals? The uh, eight. We're about to build a pattern here. I'm going to go backwards, which unfortunate, is unfortunate, but that's the space I have. Anybody know what 2 to the second power is? Uh, 4. Um, notice this. You go from 2 to the third power to 2 to the second power. The answers, you just divide by the base. In other words, um, 8 divided by 2 gives you the 4. 4 divided by 2 is going to give you the next answer down. It's going to be a 2. And most of us hopefully know that 2 to the first power is just 2. No big deal so far. So to get from the 8 to the 4, I just did 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And it is true. 2 to the 0 power really is 1. Um, I'm going to do this zero power thing on these so you can feel the rhythm, and then we'll do the negatives, and then uh, I'm going to say one last 
thing about the bottom. Just start it off and then that, let that be your taster. Here it comes. Uh, three to the third power. Anybody happen to know that? Twenty-seven. It's true. Three times three is nine. Times one more three is twenty-seven. Just like doing the division, twenty-seven divided by three is going to be how much? Okay, the division part is bad. How about three squared? Yeah, it's going to be nine. But again, notice when you're going downhill to get to the next lower number, you just divide by whatever the base was. Oh, it's a three. Um, 27 divided by 3 is a 9. 9 divided by 3 is going to be a 3. But here's what I want you to feel. This next step is the one I want you to feel. A number raised to 1 will always be that number. And to get to the next line, since we're dividing by whatever the base was to get one below, this line right here will always be the number divided by itself. In other words, 3 divided by 3 will always give you a 1. And no matter what the number is, if it's an 8, 8 to the first power is 8, 8 to the 0 power is going to be 1. Because to get down from this line to this line, you just divide the same number. Uh, so here's what I want you to write. If you had space, put in the answer to 4 to the first power and 4 to the 0 power. Write in that answer, just the, the 4 right there. And then the last part, the letter version of it. It's true, it does the same thing with the letter version. Please put in what you think the letter version would be for x to the 1 power and x to the 0 power. Those who follow patterns, uh, I wish I could highlight it for you. Um, do I have a highlighter? Uh, pens? Uh, nothing? All right, here comes the question. Uh, anybody know what um, uh, x to the first power equals? Uh-huh. x to the zero power? Zero is close. Uh, one. Anything raised to zero power is one. Why? Because to get there, you always divide that thing by itself. And anybody divide by himself is one. You'll see this a bunch of times. These two. You need to know all the other stuff. Uh, work with your brain. All right, so let's talk about negative exponents, and then I'll start that, and then that'll be it for those. Remind you, Lisa. Um, anybody happen to know what uh, 2 to the negative 1 power is? If you happen to know, you've seen it before you know it. My hint is to get it, you're going to do the line above it divided by the base. The line above it divided by the base. The line above it divided by the base. What is 1 divided by 2 equal? Uh, yeah, we're going to leave it as a fraction. Anybody know what maybe 3 to the negative 1 power is going to be then? Yeah, 1 third. And a negative exponent just turns it into a fraction. And the question that some people might want to like, wow, why does it do it? Because to keep going down, you're always dividing 9 divided by 3, 3 divided by 3, 1 divided by 3, then it gets a little wacky after that, and you can just know the answer. Next line is 1 over the 3 to the second power. All right, um, here. So do me a favor, write down what, what you think x to the negative 1 power is going to equal. Look at the pattern. And then what um, x to the negative 2 power will equal. Look at the pattern. Now, if you're lost, the hope will be you'll have this. And I say, okay, you can use your notes. Hopefully you can see some of it. You can get a highlighter and highlight the parts that are important. All right. All right, so let me write those in. Uh, someone tell me what uh, x, if you have an answer, x to the negative 1, someone say it. Who has an answer? Pattern. 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 All right. Someone who has answered, if you know it still? 1 over x. 1 over x. And then the second one is going to be 1 over x squared. 
So even if you don't know it for now, we'll just get it in your notes. All right, so they got that in there now so you can feel what's about to happen. Uh, x, x plus 2 equals um, 5. Sorry, let's make it equal 6. Um, 3 times x equals 6. Um, log of um, base 4 x equals 6. Two problems are way easier. You remember them from when you were a little kid. The last one is going to connect to those. There you go. Hey, to get rid of, to solve for x, you subtract 2. You do the inverse. I'm not getting those answers. I'm just making the point. Anybody know what the inverse of uh, multiplying 3 is? You do it to both sides. Uh -huh. You divide 3 on both sides. That's the inverse. That's how you get rid of all the other stuff so you can have the letter alone. Anybody know what the inverse, how you get rid of log? Inverse log is kind of what you would say to say, hey, do the opposite of log. Whatever the opposite is, do that. The opposite of log is taking whatever the base is, this little number that hangs on the lower part of the G, and raising all of this to that power. Like, what? In other words, I'm going to make a 4. 4 is now the base. 4 raised to all of this. What I do on one side, I must do on the other. 4 raised to the 6th power. See, that looks weird. The first time they told you to subtract both sides, that may have felt weird. The first time they told you to divide on both sides, that may have felt weird. The first time he's telling you to make for the base of this power. Like, see how, how uh, 2 is the base to the power of 1, 3 is the base, 4 is the base. Well, now here, 4 is the base of all this. What happens with this? You wind up canceling all of this out. That's what it does. It undoes it, leaving just the x equals 4 to the 6th power. Everybody in your calculus for just a quick second. Um, and I'm going to end it there. We didn't get to do one of the log ones. I'll comment on them, but we won't do them. To calculate, please do four uh, carrot symbols below the clear button. Six. Let's see what big number that gives. Nothing there for you? Nothing for the front row? Uh, we're going to start with two, um, three. All right. Uh, say that number again, please. 4096 like this? Yeah. So that's, that's how easy it's going to be. The hard part is, hey, do I remember how to get rid of the word log? Yeah, yeah, just whatever the base is, the little number hanging on there. Raise him on this side, they cancel, raise him on that side, and now you have this problem. Four raised to power, ten raised to power, three raised to power. So here, and I'm not doing it, um, I'm going to raise it with a three. This will go away, so it'll be 3 raised to the second power. Get my answer there. Here, here's a little baby 4. Now, this one's going to be weird, but still, to start it off, 4 here is going to be 64 equals 4 raised to the x power. Um, I'm not doing these. I'm just telling you what's going to happen the next time we'll do them. Um, my eraser. For this guy here, log 10,000. Hey, hey, where's the little bottom number? Don't we need, like, a little one? Yeah, and that for log. If you don't see, there's an imaginary 10 down there. Like x raised to the 1 power, we don't write the 1. Um, if there's an x and there's no number in front, it's a 1. Well, for logs, the invisible number is a 10. So to get this answer, I would do 10 down here. So the answer would be 10 raised to the x power over here. Just so you feel the rhythm, we're going to do it next time. A 3 here, a 3 here, 3 cancel, 1 equals. 3 raised to some power, and the last one, the end. He's bad already. Why is he bad? Notice here, there's a 2 raised to log. You see a little baby 2? This one I'm going to uh, cross out. Because the 2s are there already, you're able to just cross them out already, and you're left with 8 equals x. It's a terrible problem. 
they already put like the, the baby four, they already put it so the answer here, and then we're done on these. And it's equals. <laughs>